actually do. So this video is going to be laid out different than how I normally do my videos. Instead of a few smaller videos, it's all going to be one big video covering the rear suspension. I'll, I apologize for that. Um, everything's just been crazy the last few weeks and there's a lot of broken up recording. So I'm trying to do the best I can to still get y'all a video kind of explaining what all went on. So the first thing I had to do was uh, look at the four link. The other day I got two things in the mail. Um, one I was not expecting, that's this, it's a creeper, um, it's actually from one of my subscribers, Fish Guts, he's so tired of seeing me crawl around on this 50 year old concrete that he cut a creeper and sent it to me for me to use. And don't be surprised if I power slide out from underneath this thing later and start singing Grease Lightning. Well it's Grease Lightning! And then the second thing that came in is our universal four link kit. So let me give y'all a quick close up of this kit. Um, pan hard bar, all of the bars are full TIG welded. <clears throat> pan hard bar will be cut to length with a drop in bung that we'll end up welding up. Comes with all the hardware and bushings for it. Full TIG welded, full adjustable, each one. The weld quality is really nice on them. They did a great job. Comes with all the hardware, grade eight hardware, all the bushings. Comes with our brackets to weld to the rear end. Really nice cut quality. They look good. And our front mounting brackets, which come already welded to a piece of two by four. That way we can find a place on the frame, stick it to it, weld it up. Of course, I'll end up boxing it up somehow or another, but that's a quick look at what you get with this kit. So I realized I'm talking about my four link, but I never even revealed what my plan was for rear suspension on this thing. And that's these coil springs. I considered doing coilovers, but I don't know much about them. I don't know if you can tow with them. Um, they're expensive to mess with. So I didn't really want to go down that road. And I started thinking what larger car with rear coil springs ride nice. and after some research, I found out a 96 Caprice wagon was within about 100 pounds of the Travelog. So these springs ought to work great for us. For the occasional towing, Airlift makes these helper bags that go inside the cool springs that a lot of the newer Dodges use and people really seem to like them. So we're gonna try a set of those. And for our day-to-day -day driving, this thing should ride nice and soft. And then for the occasional towing, we can shoot some air in the back. The only other thing that I would like to add, and I'm, I plan on adding as of right now, we just gotta see what kind of room I end up with underneath there, is a sway bar to help take some of the, the body roll out of this thing, because I know with these, uh, the body roll is gonna be pretty bad. So before I even started to mock up the four link, I wanted to get an idea of where the top of the axle tube would be. Just so I knew how much room I'd have left before I bottomed out in the C-notch. So, I knew for mocking up the suspension, I wanted to be about an inch and a half away from tucking wheel on this uh, body back here. So if you measure from the center of the wheel out an inch and a half past there, it gets you 10 and a half inches. Well from there, because the axle tube's right at three inches, you can sub uh, subtract an inch and a half to come up and that would be where the top of your axle tube should be. So I mocked up a measuring stick across there so I could see how much travel I'd have left. If the axle tube was right there, it was only gonna be uh, two inches, which really isn't enough. So then at that point, I decided I was actually gonna end up raising the back up an additional inch so I could have at least uh, three inches of travel. It's a setup where this would be the overall height of the axle in here at ride height that's only gonna allow us which that can't tuck up in there good three inches of travel which i think will still be okay with the right shocks um it's not ideal i should have seen notched it a hair more but i also didn't want to start coming up through the floor and everything so it is what it is this is going to get tacked to the frame you want your nut on the inside 
you put the bolt through that way and then th tack that up, it's gonna be on there for good. Since I was only gonna have three inches of travel, I wanted to make sure if the axle ever traveled up that far, that is gonna hit dead in the center of the C-notch. That way it didn't limit my travel anymore. So I have, have a three inch drive shaft that I ended up C-clamping in the dead center of the C-notch on both sides and I got it squared up. That way to imitate the axle tube ever going up that high. Once I had it clamped up, I took the four link with both brackets on each ends and I pushed the brackets on the axle side onto the drive shaft and basically let it hold itself there. And then I was able to take the front brackets and pick them up towards the frame as high as I could take them. So I was kind of limited on how high I could get my brackets without the link bars wanting to start hit the body. Um, I got them as close as I could, but I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's perfect geometry on my four link. If you guys would like to learn about setting up a four link with proper geometry and everything it takes, head over to Pedantic. I believe that's how you say it, publishing. I'll provide some links to his videos down below. He is a geometry whiz when it comes to this stuff. Before we tack it up, we're clearing right here. I mean, just barely. It's like it was made for it. Over in here, we are going to be close with the nut or with the bolt head on that link, but we should clear. And like I said, well, I don't know if I mentioned, I already cleaned up around here where we got fresh metal to tack up. Oh. I'm just going to weld it up like this and I will end up uh, bracing this whole bracket assembly back to the frame this way where it all comes off. So there will end up being plenty of support. Three fat tacks, front and back. Uh, actually welding it a little bit because we're gonna end up cycling this without full welding it. So we wanna make sure it ain't gonna mess up on us. So I got the rear end cleaned up and I know I mentioned the Astro Van rear end. Well, long story short, it's not gonna fit. And after pulling my head out of my ass, I decided just to use the factory one. We'll go into more detail in that some other time. But I got all the brackets cleaned up off of it and we're going to actually get this thing slid over and mocked up underneath there. I ended the day with those brackets being tacked onto the frame and everything just kind of slid up in place but nothing actually tacked to the axle. So that night I got in the house and I started thinking about it and I woke up in the middle of the night and I lost sleep for a good couple hours thinking about how I did not want to compromise and pick the ass into this thing up an extra inch. I decided I, if I had to, I was going to re-C notch it. So I never planned on making a video out of the C notch just because it's very time consuming and I knew it was going to take longer than usual because I had to cut off some of the old stuff. I got out there the next day. I got the driver's side done and the passenger side probably to like 70%. And then had a crazy week. Ashley got diagnosed with the flu. She was down for the count. Every kid ended up getting sick, basically. Flat tires, Yukon messing up. You name it, bad juju happened that week. So a week later, I was finally able to get the passenger side finished up just on the C-notch. Made us a template that would sit on top of the old piece of pipe to give me an area to trace around on the outside and then I just squared across the bottom and plasma cut it out. Now the boxing plate's still on the outside. On here on the inside I cut off the top boxing plate that was on there before and bent up this piece. So then on the inside after I got that piece welded in I cut another piece of strap that runs all the way up through the top of the frame all the way back and then back down through the frame 
and I had to cut a notch in the top of the frame for that piece to slide in there but it's full welded and full boxed and that overall height is like an inch and a half above the top of the frame so since we only gained uh, an inch and three eighths travel and the overall height went up an inch and a half we actually gained a little extra thickness overall on what's left of our frame which is good and then once I had it all welded in, I just cut this inside boxing plate that sat down along all that and full welded it up. So nice and beefy. We have more uh, we have more bracing on there now overall. And we can get this thing sat down where I really want it sat down. So win, 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 however you want to look at it. Once the second C-notch was done, I could actually move forward with mocking up the axle. All right, that should be getting pretty close right there. And before you tack it up, you wanna make sure that you're centered side to side. And you can do that by measuring off like your backing plates to the frame and making sure your numbers are matching there. You wanna make sure these, uh, your link, bar, link bars are running parallel with your frame. So for mine, off the frame up here to the middle is three inches, so back here, off the frame make sure this uh this bar is centered up at three inches so you want to make sure these are running parallel with your frame and then pinion angle and i'm not going to get into detail with that a whole lot in this video because i want to make a video about pinion angle um a, a whole separate video so as you make these changes and you move this rear end around um especially if you're on like some wobbly jack stands like I am, it don't take much to throw it off, especially after you've had to like shim this up just a hair to get it matching on both sides. And then you try to roll, roll it to set pinion or you bump it just that, you know, 16th of an inch over to try to center it up and it'll drop down just a hair on one side and then you're off. So before you tack this thing, Make sure you triple verify all those measurements. Go back and check it again. Don't just assume because it was good, you know, 15 minutes ago, it's still good after you've made a couple changes. I threw a couple more tacks on there because we're gonna end up cycling this. So that's what I'm about to do. And what I'm gonna do is uh, check the angle here and then cycle it up all the way and check it there just to see how much our opinion's gonna change. And then another thing I'm looking at right now is this link bar is gonna get damn close to this body right here. We may end up having to clearance that. So also with going this low, our floor is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to cut this out. I'll probably end up bracing it another way, but for now, I'm going to cut this out. My precious floor. It changed maybe half a degree traveling up all the way. But nonetheless, the four link was done and I can finally move forward with starting to figure out the coil spring mounts. So to put a coil spring in here, this frame's so narrow that if we set the coil springs inside and had clearance, basically they're gonna end up being right next to each other, which wouldn't be no good. So to get them on the outside of the frame, we're gonna have to do some uh, trimming here. So we need to cut this cross member right here out which luckily this one's a body mount, but this one's not. It just runs across there. So we can cut it right along this cross member, leaving the weld on there. And we'll cut it off over here. There is a bracket down there that I'll end up grinding off the spot welds and getting it off of there as well. And then we're gonna come six and a half inches from this edge up here, give, us, gives our, give ourselves a mark, 
and then I'm gonna mark it down at a 65 degree angle. We'll end up cutting it along this top lip all the way back towards here. And we're gonna come six and a half inches from this lip back and same thing. I'll put this right along the edge to give me a area to trace to and we'll cut it out. And when we get done, it'll end up looking like that right there. There's another lip on this side that I want to get rid of as well. So now we'll have plenty of room to uh, build our mounts. Luckily we don't actually get up inside the body or nothing. The C channel's up in there and that's a pinch weld right along there. So we're still good. Since I know we're gonna have to go behind the axle, coming off of it, looking right at four inches, um, right at this boxing plate right here, is a little bit past four inches, so it's a good area to kind of use to try to hit center. It'll give us a little bit more clearance. So I just come up with this template and it steps around for the boxing plate right there. And I don't want to get up above any of this. I want to keep it below there. So that'll give us some room to be able to brace it up. So I think this is going to be my shape and I'm going to go cut this out with a plasma and clean up the corners real quick. So the plate where the center was gonna be, I did that by knowing that where the stepped over was center, put the straight edge on there, come out, and I went to four and three eighths. That'll give us a little bit more clearance off of there as well. Um, drill a hole. I think I'm gonna put some kind of retainer that goes up through there, so I want a hole there. And then this is just a piece of scrap tubing I have. I cut this little piece five eighths of an inch long center it on here and weld it up and that'll locate the spring on here. So now I wanna go get this tacked on the travel off frame. That's good right there. Check the overall height. Front to back is good. The last thing I wanna check is a reference measurement from the center of this hole to the center of this body bolt. Should be 14 inches, and it is, so we're good. So looking at bracing this up, first idea is, like a lot of upper bag mounts, come out off this plate and drop a plate down. And I started thinking about that and I was looking at all these holes and everything, and I thought maybe I'll do something similar to that, but also break the plate where it goes back and hugs this frame. That way it gets full welded all around there and uh, bends out this way, and it'll full weld this. So we need to make one of these. So I'll just set this on this four inch strap I have, and I'm gonna cut it out with the plasma. Now drilled a couple holes in there that can be plug welds as well. Marked where that uh, brake needs to be. And then we're gonna put it in this press brake and uh, bend it to 100 degree angle. That's looking pretty good. Both sides are matching. Uh, I'll start on the passenger side first thing this morning. So the next thing I wanna do 
is actually look at putting a bar that runs across there. Uh, but in order to do that, I've got to get some of this floor out of my way. This sucks because we're kind of backtracking, but you see where that center piece is cut out? I'm going to cut those front ones basically like that and then come back here and cut right here on them and it'll get all the stuff out of our way. With this being lined up in the center, we can bring a cross member out this way, taper it down. It'll put a lot of strength out here supporting this. It's going to tie all the way across here together, which will stiffen up the frame back here. It'll give us um, uh, a location to put our shock mounts as well. So it's worth it to get this floor out of here and we'll just have to modify it down the road. I just cut a piece of this to length. This is inch and a half DOM 250 wall. And basically I wanna sit that on there going across like that, except I am gonna notch it somehow and get it to sit down better on that C notch. I don't wanna just sit that there and weld it. So I gotta figure out how I wanna notch this out. I'm thinking I may just move it forward or actually it's looking like it may have to come down. It may not sit underneath the floor. It's gotta stay underneath that edge over there. This is pretty wild looking because we cut the overall mount to drop it down, but then to be able to slide forward, I had to take out this area for the C notch. And then because the C notch has come down at an angle, had to cut even further back on here. And it just makes it look like a crazy piece. And I went ahead and just did a 45 on the ends of this with the chop saw. It'll look a lot better tapering off like that instead of just being uh, straight up and down. Looks pretty good. Should have grabbed a square. gonna be nice and strong. I think that'll work. To do these bottom mounts, I built this real quick, which this from end to end is 11 and a half inches long, which is what I know the springs are gonna compress to with the weight of the travel all. And I recommend to absolutely nobody to do this, but we need to measure this. So right there, 11 and three quarter, or one quarter, I'm sorry. Just under 12 inches. Now I did have those springs bolted down to that angle iron and zip tied to that two by four, but they were straight underneath the frame, keeping all the weight there. Like I said, I don't recommend to anyone to do that, but I needed these numbers. The overall length of that spring, just sitting there with no weight on it, is 16.25. We're gonna average the two measurements I got, which would be 11 and a half. So it's at, at compressed with the weight that we have, we're at 11 and a half. Well, that's a four and three quarter difference. And if you do the math on that, divide your 4.75 by your 16.25, you'll get 29 and some change. But it was compressed 29%. What I read online said anywhere from 25 to 30% is the weight you want on a rear coil spring. So that means as far as that being right for this, we nailed it. And I also know how much more it's gonna compress, which we're gonna need for doing our mock-up of even getting the mounts close. We don't wanna just throw those things in there having no clue where they're gonna to compress to because I didn't really think they were gonna compress close to five inches. So it's good to have that number. So now we can move forward. So this, I'm gonna take it 
put it up through the top plate and thread it on and then I'll show you what my templates are looking like for the bottom. This is going to end up going up in there and I'm going to break that at an angle and it'll basically sit like that and then I have these little gussets figured out which will basically end up going up in there and this stuff lines up a lot better whenever it's made out of metal I'll have to do two of these but because this side's uh, flat and longer uh, it'll be the same template except I add additional uh, three inches of material basically off there and then off this bottom we're gonna cut a piece of pipe that sits down on there so let me get all these pieces cut um, it's nothing real elaborate it's just cutting stuff out with the plasma and cleaning it up again and cutting a piece of pipe all the way around with a cutoff wheel which is just time consuming so let me get all my pieces cut here's all of our pieces i bent this at a 60 degree angle that's going to allow it to run up into those uh, lower brackets so the first piece we need to get on is this piece and I'm just gonna slide it up into place and then hold it on with a nut right here off of this little uh, strut I built. There'll be some wiggle room on this around, which is good. I've gotta make sure to get it level uh, both ways, right there and side to side. And I'm gonna get up in there and put a tack on it. After I get it tacked up, this piece right here will basically end up going up like that hopefully you can see this is a piece of pipe I have which was the whole reason I cut this the size I have it I'm gonna have to get it tacked on which it's hard to hold up there and show uh, but this is actually cut a little bit bigger I'm gonna weld it on the inside and end up smoothing down the outside to it so it's a nice butt up fit and then this brackets basically like the one over here Except, like I said earlier, it's just longer where it can reach out. It looks pretty good. You see how that bracket works there on the outside? Grind down this weld on the outside to make it all look like one bracket. But the ones on the inside I'll leave. And we'll end up closing this in back here with a piece of quarter inch as well. So it'll be full boxed back here. Ooh, baby. I did add a little... A piece of pipe in there as well but this thing is uh off the ground right now i don't want to get too crazy because everything's tacked up but i did want to make sure everything was gonna go up oh that's nice These are full welded up. What I did end up adding was this back plate. Like I said, once I got everything welded up, just cut a piece of strap, cap that. As you can see, I ground down around here like I was talking about, so that lip matches up. Looks good. Got rid of the welds on that side uh, where these two brackets met up. Like I said, ground them all down. Around here on the front, I ended up adding another brace this morning after looking at this right there on the front up top everything's welded up looks good I did weld up the four link brackets where uh, they were tacked to the frame So once the coil mounts were done, I wanted to add the pan hard bar. And again, if you want to really 
study and understand how one of them works properly, I'll provide a link to the Pedantic Publishing video down below because he has a great video on it that will hopefully help you guys out. So, the next question is where to put it. Well, a lot of times you'll see it on the back side of a rear end. That's why mine even comes with a bend in it, so it can hug the rear end and then kick over and clear that rear center section and hug it tight. Well, the only issue with that is I want to fit an anti-roll bar back here and I want to fit the shocks off this back tube just because it'd be really simple to do that way. And I'd like to get the anti-roll bar off those coil mounts for where the end links go on it. So I want to keep this back area open on mine. We should be able to do something very similar to that right there. And with that end being cut to length that gets us real close to the frame where it'll be easy to build tabs right there. We can get this bar. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just set it level right here for now since we're at, we're at our half travel. If you watch that pan hard bar video I'm talking about, you'll understand that at half travel, the rear end is actually going to be kicked off to one side just a little bit. Because my suspension don't have a large range of travel, and because the pan hard bar is adjustable, I wasn't really worried about getting that offset added into mine at the time. If your pan hard bar was not adjustable, you definitely want to figure out that number and add it in when you build your mounts to add the offset to it. For this to end in the middle of the frame and from the center of there to the drop in portion is like three and three quarters what I have it adjusted to right now. So I need a fine middle of the frame on here. Measure from there over three and three quarter. Cut that off. Drop in the drop in bung and weld it up. So basically to get this bar where we need it, we need a tab that is five inches from the bottom of it to the center of the hole for that. So we can get it tacked onto the bottom of the frame. And this is why holding on to junk is always a good idea. This was actually a leg from a old caster plate for a wheel and cutting it as close as I could to the weld actually got me right at five inches. So. I don't have to drill a hole, it's a quarter inch. It's already got a nice radius on the end. That saves me a lot of work. Three and five eighths. All right. So there's our pan hard bar going across there. Everything tacked up into place. After getting the pan hard bar tacked up, I decided to leave it just tacked. I didn't want to full weld anything because I still need to get the shocks mounted and a couple other things. So the next thing I looked at was the shocks. When I go to do shocks, I'll take a measurement of where I think the shock could fit and then you need to add a couple inches for it to be able to travel up and it needs to be able to compress a few inches as well that way there's a range of motion on it so if you'll google like monroe parts list they'll bring it it'll bring up a big pdf that you can click on and it has the monroe shock part numbers the compressed length the extended length and the overall travel so i'll look down through that list and get a handful of part numbers that I know the range of the shock could work in my application. After I get a few part numbers, I'll look them up to see what they'll fit. That way I can see how they mount 
And if I find a couple that'll work as far as the mount style, then I'll see what they fit and I'll try to find something that's comparable in weight to whatever I'm putting them on. The whole process can kind of be a pain in the butt, but in the end, you can figure out shocks that work good for you and your application, and you can pick up at O'Reilly's cheap. So here's the shocks now, and they're just tacked up. Nothing really comp complicated. They're at about a 25 degree angle, and these shocks are from a G10 passenger van for the front. The lower tabs are the same of what I used for mounting the panhard bar, recycled, and these top tabs I just built. When I pull this out to full weld everything, these will get braced in along with the panhard bar mounts down there. Without the shocks, this thing bounced like crazy. I still need to weld up the mounts and brace them up, but that's something I'll do in the future because we still have to mount a gas tank and an anti-roll or a sway bar back there. In the end, I think this thing's gonna ride nice and I'm happy I went this direction. Even though this wasn't a bunch of individual videos and I didn't go real into detail on everything, I hope you still learned something, got an idea, or at least enjoyed watching. If you're new to the channel, please check out some of the other videos. If you always come back, thank you guys once again. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop. And I will see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys in the next video.